One of the questions for Ask Don Shit was about uh, what I think of United States Marines. And I've got a real history with Marines. I think they are fantastic. I think they're the most elite fighting force on the planet. Uh, SEALs have a very kind of short history compared to the Marine Corps and their traditions and some of their exploits and accomplishments, man. It's, they're forced to be reckoned with. So I have eaten with these guys. I've slept with them. I have deployed with them, done operations, exercises with them. I, I just think they're fantastic guys. And so in the early, early 1990, I'm in the training cell at SEAL Team 2 and Desert Storm is heating up. So myself and a, 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 some other uh, senior SEALs grab a couple of platoons and we take them to 29 Palms, California uh, to desert warfare, land warfare, demolition, survival. We did all kinds of stuff. 29 Palms, California is one of the most miserable bases in the world. It's right in the middle of the Mojave Desert. It is so extreme heat out there. Anybody that knows dust, it's, it, it's harsh. But you can do uh, a lot of stuff out there. This place is the size of Rhode Island. And one of the things about the difference between the Navy and the uh, Marine Corps, when you go into a Navy base, if you go into a few buildings around, you'll see a picture of the commanding officer. He's not splattered everywhere. You go into the uh, commissary, you go into personnel, dispersing, uh, to the hospital, you'll see a picture of the base commanding officer. You go to a Marine Corps base, that guy is plastered everywhere. And a little known fact about Marine officers is they're not allowed to smile in pictures. So every one of them is just a scowling, menacing figure up there letting you know, this is my base, bitch. You better conform on this thing or I'll have your fucking sorry ass in a sling. And the base commanding general uh, at 29 Palms was a general named James Livingston. Oh, boy, this guy. What a scowl. What an intimidating picture he had. I'll never forget how I looked at that and went, oh, my God. And I've always been enamored with the uh, Medal of Honor. I've read every single citation there is. I'm uh, very enamored with the guys who have been awarded this, uh, the work, that, uh, what they did to get them. And uh, I've read all of them. And uh, so... He's got a Medal of Honor, and I go running down to the base library to refresh myself on what this guy did, read the thing, and I'm just even more impressed, you know, just, wow, I'm on a base with this guy. And when you train on a base like that, you check out ranges through a, a place called range control. You go to range control, uh, you show them that you're qualified to run these ranges, mortar ranges, demo ranges, uh, long gun ranges, close quarter combat, you know, all these things like that. And then they'll check you out of range and you have procedures that you have to follow. You got to clean it up, you know, turn it back, you know, just this weird stuff. And the Livingston's office was right smack dab next to range control. So the longer you're out at 29 Palms, the filthier you get. And as SEALs, we kind of pride ourselves on that. We don't sweat that stuff. We're not like Marines, man. Those guys are just crisp uh, all the time. And unshaven, filthy, mixed match uniform, unbloused boots. We were a Marine's worst nightmare just to even look at us. And the base would get so hot sometimes they would put up these heat flags, these heat advisories. You know, they we didn't pay any attention to them. We 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 had to train, and they restricted access uh, guys moving around the base. So I go to range control. I am so filthy. I am driving this Humvee, and it is high noon. So everybody on that base, all these Marines that have been hunkered down in here from this heat thing going on come out, and they are all going to chow. It's just, it's just this migration of camouflage uniforms going to the chow hall. And I'm going to range control, and again, man, I look like, I look terrible. And we've been working hard. I go to pull into range control, and I look up, and there he is. There's Livingston, right there. He's 15 yards from me. And he is in his beautiful dress uniform with a bunch of uh, silly little uh, uh, Marine officers around him, brown nosing him. And I went, oh my, holy shit, that's him. And I go, 
And the next thing I know, there's an explosion. That boom, the loudest thing you ever heard. Boom! I hit a stop sign with the Humvee right in front of me. And I ripped out this huge thing of concrete that is holding that in the ground. And it is stuck underneath the Humvee. And it's, every Marine on that base stopped and they are just staring at me. And so is he. He's the first one I looked at. He's just looking at me with that scowl and all those little Marine officers kissing his ass or looking at me. He's right there. And so I just kind of freaked. I mean, what do you do? Well, what do I do? I get out of the Humvee. I go to the front of that thing as fast as I can. I wrenched it. Don't ask me how I did. I wrenched that stop sign out from underneath that Humvee. I lifted that whole thing of concrete and threw it in the back of the Humvee, got in, and I sped away. Hit the gas. With him staring at me the whole time. Filthy. I looked really bad, too. I was a walking uniform violation. So I go back to range control the next morning. We just blow that one off today. I'm staying away from that place. I go back uh, the next morning, and I had been pretty tight with a gunny sergeant in there that was issuing the ranges, and I said, hey, gunny, I'm the guy that hit that stop sign yesterday. And he goes, oh, hell, somebody hits that stop sign once a week. <laughs> and it's, it's the guy's gawking at the general. I mean, you just you can't miss that figure. It's just a perfect place for him to be perched as you're driving, you know. It's like, a you know, seeing a whatever and uh they hit the stop sign they hit the stop sign so fantastic guy he went on some re he really represent he's so represents that award they all do all the medal of honor recipients really represent that award well and i went on to be a state senator and he's still active in all the veterans affairs he's a big trump supporter too and uh, he doesn't like the way the country's going so uh yeah, I've met a, a number of Medal of Honor uh, recipients uh, since he was my first, and I wish it really would have gone better between me and the uh, the general. So. It's uh, Memorial Day when this is being posted up, and uh, there's a, a great charity out there. It's run by a SEAL friend of mine. It's called frogmandown.org, Navy SEALs Fund, frogmandown.org. And I was very honored that they asked me to do the uh, memorial toast this year. They have a, a big event, and they asked that I I do it and uh, and honor my fallen SEAL teammates. And uh, so uh, here it is. I'll attach this, and I appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you get a chance to swing over to the uh, video website. Uh, join up there for a month. Uh, it's all appreciated. It all goes to a very good cause, man. So thanks. I would not have wanted that dude chewing my ass out. No way. I'm coming to you today from Cambridge, Maryland, uh, on the beautiful eastern shore. And this is our waterfront farm, uh, Warrior's Rest, that we take the wounded guys out, goose and duck hunting, the kids with cancer, go fishing and crabbing. It's just a wonderful place and stuff that we do up here. But before we moved up here, uh, we lived in Chesapeake. And we owned a number of rental properties in Norfolk. And the new guys would get out of Bud's and come to those houses we had fully furnished with beer in the refrigerator. And the idea was, you don't know the area, live here for a bit until you find out where you want to relocate. And they always wanted to buy houses. They would find a house to buy and they would move out. And one of those new guys was Jason Workman. And my wife has always said that Jason was the best looking seal that ever wore a trident. And Jason was always down in our uh, cabin in uh, Chesapeake, boozing it up with all the other guys. And Jason deployed. Jason deployed to Afghanistan and he called me from Afghanistan and he was upset. He was angry. And he said, Don, there is a website in Taiwan that is selling military apparel and uh, gear and uh, they are using the pictures of dead Navy SEALs to do it. He said, I got to get that website down. You, you got to help me. I said, hey, you're deployed. Be safe. I got this one. Two days later, Jason was killed on the extortion flight. I'm Don Shipley. I'm that phony Navy SEAL of the week guy. And my 
verification letters that I send out uh, verifying phony seals, uh, the first paragraph in there is my efforts to expose seal imposters are performed as a service to the public and an honor of my fallen seal teammates. Men who truly earned the title of United States Navy SEAL, but are no longer able to stand forward in defense of their honor, their reputation, and their teams. And while Memorial Day is to remember the fallen, the yin, there is also a yang, and it's a dark side, and it's to vigorously defend the reputation of those guys who have fallen for the ep from the epidemic of SEAL imposters. Those imposters not only steal from those veterans that rightfully earn that, they steal from their wives, their children, their mothers, fathers, friends, and other family. They're despicable, terrible, little underachieving puts, and their reputations need vigorously defended. And I'll get after all of them. So my toast to uh, Memorial Day, if everybody would grab, fill their hand with something, I'm having a Hefeweizen, a wheat beer. And my toast is this. There's a race of men who don't fit in, a breed that can't stand still. So they break the hearts of kith and kin and roam the world at will. Hoo-yah, frogmen. Thank you for inviting me to do this.